In this video, I'm going to explain the arthrokinematic movements roll, glide and spin, as well as traction and compression. Get our very own assessment ebook and mobile app. Links are in the video description. Hi and welcome back to Physio Tutors. Osteokinematics describe the movements of bones in space around an axis and in a certain plane. We are describing changes in angulation as flexion, extension and so on. Arthrokinematics, on the other hand, describe the movement of joint surfaces of a male or convex joint in relation to a female or concave joint or the other way around. An example for a convex joint would be the head of the humerus on its concave joint partner, the glenoid. In arthrokinematics, we are talking about combined movements of rotations and translations, which are further specified as spin, roll and glide, as well as traction and compression. In case of a roll movement, which is a rotation, new points of both joint surfaces will make contact with each other. So if we roll to the left in this example, point one of the convex part will come into contact with point one of the concave part, point two of the convex part will come into contact with point two of the concave part and so on. Rolling always occurs in the same direction as the angulating bone, whether the surface is concave or convex. If rolling occurs alone, it causes compression on the surface on the side to which the bone is angulating, so on the left side in this case, and separation on the other side, so on the right side in this case. In normally functioning joints, pure rolling does not take place without a spin or a slide. And that's logical because otherwise the moving joint surface would just roll off the edge of its joint partner. In case of a gliding, also called sliding movement, which is a translation, one point on one of the surfaces is contacting new points on the opposing surface. So in this case, point zero on the convexity will make contact with point zero, one and two and so on on the concave part. In case of a spin movement, one point of the moving joint partner stays in contact with the same point on the surface of the other joint partner. All other points of the moving joint rotate around an axis which is identical with the plumb line through the contact point of both surfaces. Although spinning rarely occurs alone, an example of an impure spin would be during flexion and extension of the shoulder in which the head of the humerus spins on the glenoid. Then we have traction, which is the distraction or separation of two joint partners seen in red here. Be aware that traction does not always occur in the direction of the long axis of the bony partners. In the hip joint, for example, traction in the direction of the axis of the femur would result in an inferior glide. Instead, traction must happen perpendicular to the joint line of the concave joint partner. At last, we have compression, which is the decrease of joint space between two partners, seen in green here. Compression occurs during weight bearing, provides stability to the joints and helps to move synovial fluid to maintain cartilage health. Okay, this was a quick introduction into arthrokinematic movements. Knowledge about them is important if we want to understand the concave convex rule by Carlton Bourne, which you can watch by a click on the video right next to me. As always, we hope that this video was helpful to you and you leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Check out our newly released ebook and mobile app in the description down below. And find more information on Facebook, Instagram, or on physiotutors.com. Thanks a lot for watching. This was Kai, Physiotutors. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.